Hello, it's week six, and this week I'm looking at some old newspapers. So nearly all of my initial research is coming through uh, online newspapers. Uh, primary uh, source of that for me is newspapers.com, of which I have no affiliation or sponsorship with. Uh, but it's a great resource. Basically, it's digitized newspapers uh, from all over the country, maybe to a few other countries going back uh, probably over 100 years, at least. I don't know how far back it goes, but I know it covers uh, much of what I need uh, for this story, which goes back, you know, let's say, 50 years at this point, a little over uh, 50 years. So um, why newspapers, or at least why start with newspapers? To be honest, it's kind of an easy place to start. It's something that I can do um, anywhere, remotely. Uh, I just need access to the internet. I don't need to dig through uh, someone's personal um, uh, archives or anything like that. It's just there. So that's a great starting point. Um, and then also, it, it's kind of a different, a couple different kinds of information. There's obviously the newsworthy uh, kind, which are events and activities, launch dates and closure dates and all that stuff that are included in these news articles. Other things that I find interesting, though, are editorials, which kind of paint a little bit of the emotion going on at this time, whether it's love or hate um, for a particular uh, topic. So that's actually interesting as well. Um, and even advertisements, advertisements that talk about um, the services, uh, in this case for the campus bus service that talks about services that they're providing or new services or closure of services, uh, even talking about uh, hiring uh, advertisements, trying to pick up more bus drivers or graphic artists or anything like that. So a little bit of stuff um, from each is interesting. and. Uh, Again, this is early enough in the research with it only being week six to kind of gather as much and um, just hoard it. Um, just kind of collect it all because it'd be easy enough to sort through later. So kind of doing an initial run through all of these sources. Um, oh, one more thing too about that is, uh, and this becomes a, a little bit more relevant later most likely, uh, is dealing with birth uh, notices, death notices, and marriage notices. So uh, in the previous book I wrote, that was something that was useful because you would you know, uh, read about a person involved with an event and obviously it was long enough ago and then you, later you could search that name and find a marriage um, announcement. So if it was a, a woman that got married and then you would know now what her new married name was, so you can search under that. Um, or obviously if it was long enough ago, there'd be a death notice and with the death notice, you can find surviving uh, children, and then you can search under those names and uh, send them a letter or something to try to connect with the family. So that was actually a huge, uh, huge uh, resource as well that came out of uh, old newspapers, was finding something like that. Obviously, in the modern era, there's some digital equivalent, um, but even that has its limitations because, again, if you're looking at something that was more than 10 years ago, at least of the time of uh, this recording being 2020, you might be hard pressed to find uh, a birth, death, or marriage uh, notice online. So newspapers.com uh, is kind of where I started. So I'm gonna show you, kind of show you what I look at and uh, how I kind of use its services. Okay, this is the front page of newspapers.com, which uh, I have a, a subscription with. So it has a search box in the middle. So you can, uh, so I'm gonna search by now you can see my previous searches, campus bus service. There's a couple of ones I've used before, but generic one, campus bus service in quotes to use that, uh, those words in that order. And then a plus can at the end to add that in addition to the campus bus service. So I'll search for that. And then it pulls up this website, or this page, I'm sorry, that includes all the newspapers that it has found uh, returns for that. And on the left side, you can see a, uh, a little graph of the years, so the earliest years, 1929 to uh, 2017. So you can drag that if you want to, um, or you can even type in. So I know my story starts in 67, so I'll just change it to 67, update that. Uh, below that uh, includes the states that have a return on it. So the more red a state, the more that are in there. So Florida has five matches, 
Uh, Carolina's got one, but obviously Ohio has 727. So you can click on the state or states. You can actually add other ones into, and you can see that it changes the search criteria at the top. So we have Ohio now, 1967 to 2017, and then my Campus Plus Service Plus Kent as well. And then uh, here are all the returns on that. In the upper right, you can change the uh, and how it displays them. The best match, or I like oldest first, just so I make sure that I kind of go in order and uh, don't miss anything. And then you can scroll down and find something that you like. So I'll try this article here from July 6th. And what it does, then it brings you to the news article and then it shows the highlights or at least the things that meet your search criteria, in this case, the campus bus service. And they put yellow boxes around it and this article to the right has Kent included, so that's also included. Uh, but here's the whole article. So computerize the KSU busters. Okay, this looks like a great article. So there's two ways of saving it. Uh, one of them is to do a clip and it pulls up a box that you then drag around the uh, article that you uh, want and you can scroll to kind of uh, see the whole area. Uh, if you don't want it to include uh, the yellowed items, you can actually hit cancel on the search criteria. It's not going to get rid of anything. It'll just get rid of those little yellows, which I kind of like it better. And then it gives you an option here. You can add some additional things about the article that you're saving. But once you're done, you can hit clip. And I want to save it. And I think it just defaults to your desktop. Uh, at least that's where it goes um, off of my browser when I do this. And then you have to wait a little bit as it kind of pieces that together. Uh, and then offers it to you in a PDF. I think you can choose where you save it. So it's okay for me to go to my desktop. And I'm just gonna hit okay. And this is what the um, article looks like that you clip. So if you think of this as a piece of paper, that whole sheet of newspaper was shrunk down into this little thing. So for an article this big, it's, it's not really useful. I mean, you can zoom in and, uh, and still read it, which is ultimately all you need for the purpose of research. Um, but it's a bit small in my opinion. So I really don't like the, uh, the clipping option. So there's another option that with this as well. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel out of the clipping. And then there's another option, which is print and save. So uh, it gives you two options when you click it, the entire page or the uh, select a portion of the page, which is similar to the clipping we just did. So I'm just gonna do that again. And uh, get the bottom of the article. And then come back all the way to the top to get the top of the article. Okay, and then I'm going to save it. And it gives you two options, save as a JPEG or save as a PDF, which will include source information that is coming from the Atkin Beacon Journal. But I'll just do the save as JPEG. And then it says downloading. And uh, it doesn't really uh, give you anything in addition to that. It just goes straight to your desktop or wherever your save uh, folder is. And this is what that file looks like. So it's a lot more user friendly in my opinion, uh, just because it is uh, easier to read. There's nothing extra in there. Uh, it's literally just the, the image of the document that I saved. Uh, so I like this much uh, option a lot better um, coming out of newspapers.com. So then the last step that I have with this is I uh, have to rename it. So what I do is I take the document and I change the name to uh, this format. So I start with a year. So in this case, it was 1968 and a period followed by the month. So July, so 07, and then it was the sixth day of July. And then after that, I include the title of the article. So the want joint Kent effort on traffic problems. And then after that, the last thing I do is I include an abbreviation of the source. In this case, Atkin Beacon Journal, which I use is ABJ, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, the one thing I like about this uh, type of uh, title uh, for, the, the, for the file is that 
it, if I put a couple different mixed media together, I have images and news articles and documents, PDF files and JPEGs, whatever. This way they all kind of orient themselves in chronological order, which kind of helps me kind of keep things um, in some sort of sense as I'm kind of digging through stuff. So I really like this method. Uh, whatever you choose to do, the key is to be consistent throughout everything that you do uh, so that you don't have things that are slightly different and they can get really mixed up with that. Uh, from my previous experience, boy, it took us a while to kind of sort that out. But once we kind of uh, picked a, uh, a way of doing it, it made it so much easier. So the trick is to be consistent from uh, the start of the research all the way through just to keep things in order. So another resource that I'm using um, mostly at this stage is the Daily Kent Stater. So they have a similar interface to newspapers.com and uh, I can search by bus um, and then I can you know narrow it down by decade. So I'm where I'm at with my searching is uh, 2004 so I can search just that year um, change it to the oldest one first, and then kind of go through and find uh, what I need, which is very similar to newspapers.com. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through that, but again, same kind of thing, find the document, save the document, rename the document, and then rinse and repeat, and do that a couple hundred times, um, maybe even more than that, a couple thousand times uh, to kind of get everything out of there. So I know this may seem a little bit uh, like common sense, um, so it may or may not be useful. It's just kind of keeping track of what I'm doing at this point. So week six, um, and of the 60 to 70 hours that I've invested so far in research, probably 90% of that um, is coming from just searching for articles. So uh, it's a lot of this. It's uh, searching for topics and different sources. And one thing that you'll find is you'll go through with a, a rather generic source, like I'm searching for campus bus service or just bus in general. And then you'll find a name, a place, or an event, uh, or a date. And then you can go back and search more specifically. Like, oh, something happened on July 21st, 1975, or something like that. And you can go back and search that particular date, because there may be an article um, that wasn't triggered by something that you searched for, that they used an abbreviation, Campus Bus Service, later is more uh, commonly referred to as CBS which can be hard to search for because CBS, obviously there's a net news network or a TV network that's named the same thing and it gets lost in the mix. So um, if you have something specific to look at or look for, you may have to go back by date or even search by people's name. If a person is involved, you can search by them and see what else it, uh, turns up. So that's kind of useful as well. So that's kind of week six, um, not as much uh, unique things going on, just kind of showing where I'm at with uh, the research at this level. And I'm almost kind of done with newspapers. I think maybe another week or two I should be through at least my initial run through. And then I'll probably keep revisiting it over time as new things pop up and then I dig back into the newspapers to see if I can find something else that supports it or can kind of explain it a little bit better as well. So that's it for week six. Um, Week seven is coming right up, so uh, look forward to it. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.